Guys, I hate to announce it, but it's time for Mark Three to rest at last. Man, forget about that stupid react, man. Blowing up on me three times. It's time to tear this mofo apart. So, our objective is to recover as many things as possible. So we're gonna recover all of the wave guides, the window, all of this stuff, all of these ports, this flange, and um, I'm gonna recover the auger, but I don't have any use for it, but yeah. So pretty much, um, also the wheels, the stand, we're just gonna pretty much just leave this thing as a barrel with a couple holes on it. A ran through barrel with a whole bunch of holes in it, you know, we're gonna turn this barrel into a hoe by the time we're done with this. So that's the goal, let's do it. Well, I guess that's it guys <laughs> Mark 3 is done It's over I have not failed I just found 10,000 ways that won't work I already have these auger blades And I know a lot of you don't recognize where I got these from Or where I made them But actually a video way way back When I first was building Mark 3 It was a completely different design I didn't use a 55 gallon barrel at all I fabricated everything from scratch It was basically a pipe that was cut in half I'll put the footage in but anyways I made these auger blades and these auger blades actually ironically perfectly fit a propane tank so um, with that being said it, why not like I literally already have the auger blade made for mark 4 I already have the wave guides made for mark 4 because we're only going to use four wave guides I already have the flanges I already have the pipes the plumbing so I mean like mark 4 is going to be it won't take me nearly as long to make it won't be nearly as much of a pain um, and you know what, these auger blades are actually better than, than these. I don't know exactly what I did when I made these. You see how consistent it is. It almost looks like a factory did it, right? Like these are very, very good. You know, while these are really rough compared to them. I mean, like, it works, of course, but you see it has a whole bunch of, like, it's just rougher. So I don't know exactly, I forgot how I made these so clean with the plasma torch, because I'm not a good cut on the plasma torch, but, you know, regardless, this is it. Alright guys, so this is what we're going to do. 
These are two 40 pound propane tanks. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically weld both of them together. So I'm going to cut them like right, you know, there's like this little converse section. So I'm going to obviously ignore that and cut it at the widest section on both of them and weld it together. Be put a bevel on it too. And I know a lot of people probably are like, don't weld it. If you weld it, like if you do that, it's going to be a weak point. Well, listen, guys, I have to cut off the lid and weld on the flange and slash the manway anyway. So there's going to be welding having to be done on this. Um, and also people are also going to be like, well, if you weld it, it's going to make the, the material structurally weaker. And, you know, just all these people saying everything about welding this, well, don't do it. You know, you're going to do all this. First of all, guys, let me show you. Let me show you something. See that right there? You see that? That's a weld. These propane tanks are welded as is, okay? Now they use machines to do it, a form of welding called sub-arc welding, which is obviously like a machine perfect. I mean, like, look at the weld. Like, it literally it barely looks like a weld. But that, with that being said, this is carbon steel, okay? This is the stuff I've been welding for all the years that I've done welding, all the years that I've been a welding student, we've always welded carbon steel. So this is, this is like home field for me, okay? And remember that on the reactor they exploded three times. Not once did any of my welds ever fail, right? And I don't say that to be like I'm the best or anything, but I'm saying that to be like, yes, welding this is absolutely possible. They weld high pressure vessels. They weld these. So welding stuff is absolutely possible. And that's what, I, that's what has to be done. We have to do it. There are things that have to be welded on this. Like the, even the wave guides, right? So I'm, I'm welding it, alright? I don't care what you're saying. <laughs> but anyways, with that being said, we're going to weld this together so that way it's long enough for these auger blades as you see here. For one, and for two, the other reason for making this longer is, um, yeah, capacity. And Because I could just cut the auger blades to fit this one, but here's the thing. If we have four magnetrons, right? All in this one container. I I just feel like that's a little bit too much. I'm being honest. But I feel like it's better to have four spread out longer. So like one here, one here, one here, one here. You know what I'm saying? A little crisscross or something like that, right? Or it could just be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know. <laughs> Personally, I don't. Or it could be like one, two, then one, two. Like, I don't know what's the best orientation. There's so many. Perhaps that may be the best orientation, like one, two on this side, then one, two on this side, because then there won't be any waves clashing into each other. But I'm just saying, if we had four all on this one tank, it would be a little bit, like, overpowered. Um... And that won't be a bad thing, you know, it would degrade the carbon really well. But another major part is the blades, you know? Like, think about it. If the blades were this short, that's like two rotations in this at the end. So that's going to kind of mess up the continuity of the system. And this is going to be so short, like, think about it. Once I put the flange on here, and, like, the valves, I'm going to have no space for anything else, you know? So I think it's just going to be way easier to deal with longer. And it's more realistic as a larger capacity. So the only issue is I have to weld it. But I'm actually quite excited. I love welding stuff like this. So I love welding stuff that's already made for me. And when I have to make it, you know, I don't like it because making it sucks. But because I'm not good at cutting things out, but I'm good at welding. Okay. So yeah, that is what we're gonna do. And that's exactly why. Um, yeah, I mean, and the good thing is these already have, these already have this right here. See that, 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 that's a valve, but that valve is a hole. Three-fourths MPT. And that's the hole. The shaft for this can go right through it. That's already directly dead center in the middle of the tank. These tanks are perfect. They already have everything I need. I don't got to make anything. I, need, I barely even have to drill holes. Uh, cut ho most of the holes with the angle grinder. This is one-eighth steel. Okay, one eighth steel. So, I mean, it's not gonna be that hard to cut. 
but it is pressure rated up to they, these things are meant for up to 500 psi we're never even going to get this reactor above 10 because so I'm getting boiler pressure release valves that are like they go up to 30 like so like if it hit 30 psi it's going to shoot out but the goal is this thing should never even be above 10 psi like absolute max right so yeah that's what we're going to do I'm just saying, like, honestly, you know? Alright. Well, it is at the end of the day. Now, this is what has to be done. Now, we get this. This is all that's left of the other thing we did, okay? We don't want this to be... We don't want this to turn out that way. There's certain precautions that we must take to secure the dynasty of this. Mark 4 reactor. Period.